for us, one of the issues is that rape convictions are at an all time low. And, and, and we know that and the police knows that. And there is a lot of work going on to try and work out why that is and to try and investigate, you know, explore ways of, of dealing differently with, with, with rape cases. Um, so, for example, Devon and Cornwall Police are part of, of, of a research project which is called Operation Soteria. Um, which is looking at the way rape cases are handled and, and trying to, to do it differently. So trying to put much more attention on the on the the perpetrator rather than the victim. So so there is there is this work going on. But women know that they are being failed by the criminal justice system day in, day out. We have women coming into the centre. All rape crisis centres across the country have women coming in who are constantly being failed by the criminal justice system. And to hear that on the news that that almost every single woman police officer who was interviewed in that survey has said that they have been at the receiving end or witness to absolutely appalling behavior in the workplace it's just really shocking and you know we wanted to say to Alison Hernandez who is the um, police and crime commissioner for Devon and Cornwall we want to know what she's doing is it frustrating that in 2022, 2023, we're still talking about these issues that we were probably talking about 10 years ago, probably 20 years ago as well? It's deeply frustrating. And, you know, we really should have moved on by now. I think for us in the rape crisis movement, we want women to feel that they can trust the police. Um, and there is no trust. You know, women don't generally report rape and sexual offences to the police because they they think they won't be believed or they won't be listened to or they'll be treated badly or the case will take so many years to get to court that they're just not sure they can face it. And, and one thing we do know is that 43 percent, the last time it was examined, 43 percent of people, of women who are involved in the criminal justice system for a rape case actually pull out of the system because they can't deal with it any longer because it's taken over their life and it's gone on for years and years and years. So the fact that we're still here in 2023 is is really appalling and it and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be taken really seriously. It's a very anecdotal thing. Um, I've seen a lot more women recently talking about past experiences openly on forums like Facebook, for example. Um, yeah, I, I know that uh, Me Too is much more American than it was this in this country, but there does seem to be a culture change, but it's so frustratingly slow and it seems like it's not really moving forward. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think there has been a culture change. And I think uh, one of the things, you know, is the Harvey Weinstein trial in America, which followed the Me Too movement. Um, and then you've got things like Everyone's Invited, which was that website where young people were, were talking about their experiences at schools and, and universities across the country. Um, I, I think it, it's very difficult to say whether there is more uh, rape and sexual abuse than there was in the past or it's possible that there are just a lot more women who are prepared to, to be open about it and talk about it and go public. And and the police are seeing that as, as, as a result. You know, the number of crimes reported, uh, as, as I said in my letter, um, you know, has, is going up and up every year. That doesn't necessarily mean there are more crimes. It means that more women are reporting. Uh, that means the police are more overwhelmed, um, which means that that, you know, having the right response is is even more crucial within the force. 